My 1996 Eclipse GSX is theoretically a really cool car. Now, unfortunately, I've only driven this car a handful of times, so I don't have any first-hand knowledge, but I've wanted one of these forever because they are turbocharged, all-wheel drive, manual transmission, and they look pretty cool. But according to the internet out there, the DSMs in general are one of those types of cars that you don't want to fully fix because you know when you do, something else is just going to break. And unfortunately, I do have experience with that. All I did was a tiny I mean belt job and right after that the head gasket started to leak oil so I removed the head and replaced the head gasket and the bolts and now I'm fighting a high idle issue and that's that's why the throttle body's not there I smoke tested it in the last video and it's leaking everywhere but in this video I'm trying to disprove all the haters that a DSM can be somewhat reliable so I want to finish this car and fully tune it on the dyno without any issues whatsoever and I hope the DSM gods are listening and and that's not asking too much before we begin, I just want to remind you guys that November 2nd, 2024 at Fluid Motor Union in Naperville, Illinois is the Legit Streetcars subscriber meet. So there's going to be an RSVP link down below. Please RSVP. A lot of you guys have, but we really need to know on the numbers. So I can't wait to see you guys there. Now let's go do some DSM stuff. All right. So here is the 4G63T throttle body. It's very small. I think the early ones were slightly larger, but whatever. This will support our horsepower goals. And here is a block off plate that we're going to use to block off this thermostat inside of here. So like I'd mentioned in the last video, there is a coolant circuit. So you have an in and an out and it runs coolant through here that closes a thermostat. So when it opens cold, it's open and allows more air for a higher RPM at idle and it's problematic. We're blocking it off. But anyway, let's disassemble. We're gonna rebuild this entire thing. It's leaking from the shaft seals. It's leaking from this idle screw as well. It's, it's leaking from everywhere. So the shaft has a couple of 12s. So we'll remove those. Get out. There we go. There is a lock washer as well. And oh, that is not a 12. <laughs> That's a 10. There's another nut right there. We also have a couple of Phillips screws for the shaft to blade connection. So I'll go ahead and take those out. There's one. Please don't strip. Please don't strip. Oh, yeah, we're good. And now we can actually slide this guy out of here just like this. There's our blade. So this is our throttle position sensor, and this is the little plate that it rides on. And we're just gonna pry this. Oh my God, all right. Now we have the spring for the throttle, and we're just going to hold it and slide this piece off and just kind of hold everything together at the same time. There's actually another spring in here. Yeah, right there, okay. So we'll just remove all of this. And this is the plate that the throttle position sensor rides on. So this moves. I've set the spring assembly aside and now we should be able to easily remove this shaft here. And now we can see one shaft seal here and the other on this side. Now we can remove these seals. Wow, they are so bad. So that little snap you heard right there was just the rubber. It's just crunching away. And that's the seal. There we go. And we have new ones, but yeah, this thing was just rock hard and leaking. One last part for disassembly is the BISS valve and it just threads out. So this is something else for the old idle adjustment. Lots of ways to adjust the idle on this throttle body, but we're gonna thread this thing all the way out. So that's it as far as seals. We have a bare throttle body right now and we wanna clean it. So we're gonna use a cut up coolant bottle and some mineral spirits. We're just gonna kind of soak it in here. Like that. Mix it around a bit and we're gonna keep this in here for a little while and every so often I'll agitate it. I love these plastic bristle brushes for stuff like this. It really makes cleanup a lot faster and it's gentle so we don't worry about gouging the surface or polishing this aluminum. I don't wanna do that either. Get all that nastiness. Go away. Okay, it's not all gone. I said go away. A little splishy splash. Oh yeah, look at how dirty this is already. So I have the blade and the shaft in here soaking and something I noticed on this shaft is that some of the seal has kind of melted off there. So I'm gonna wet some 800 grit sandpaper and we're gonna try and get this off gently without marring the surface at all. Oh, it's coming right off. Yeah, okay, sweet. It was right in here, all that rubber. That would not make for a great seal, that's for sure. So you can see it right there, this gray part. That is rubber. Okay, nice. This is nice and smooth. And the blade isn't too bad, but we'll give this a little 800 grit as well. 
Looking better. I'm gonna file the edges also, just to make sure that's smooth. So that could get caught up. You can lay the sandpaper down flat on a table and this will clean up in short order. Looking good. This side was a little dirtier. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this blade. So if you look here, there is a little marring from the blade that could be an area where it gets caught. I don't feel anything right here, but we're gonna use our 800 grit and just give the bore a light sand, make sure everything is smooth so it operates nicely. Oh, it's much better. No more marring anywhere. Nowhere for that blade to get caught. If you feel any nicks or ridges in here, you definitely want to take care of them, but this is good. After cleaning the throttle body and all of the internal throttle body parts, this is what we're left with. Uh, we have all of our new seals right here. This, this guy here, you can get in the picture. Uh, and then the most important part, of course, is the Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease. What do we got left? Oh, it's getting so low. It just never runs out though. So we're gonna assemble this in reverse order. We'll grab a little bit of the sunroof grease and I'm just lubing up the seals for the shaft and then we could just push them in. And it was recessed in a little bit, so I grabbed a 10 mil, tap it in the rest of the way. So here is our new seal installed. And before we go in with the other one, just wanna double check that this feels right. Yes, so the shaft is fitting in perfectly. It's not getting hung up. All right, with both of the seals installed, we can go back together with our cleaned up shaft, just like that. And this feels really good. This is the side that has the throttle position sensor. We have a new BSS valve or screw, and that stands for basic idle set screw. And we're gonna go ahead and install a new O-ring. Why this doesn't come with a new O-ring, I don't understand. You have to buy these parts separately. In what world would you replace this? and not the O-ring. Just put a little MB sunroof grease on it, and now we can go ahead and reinstall and thread it on down there. Before I took this out, I made sure to remember where it was set. So I went all the way down and then a half turn back. That's where it was originally, so it's a good starting point. Hang on, hang on, are you guys into fantasy sports? I'm on prize picks right now. This is so much fun. All you have to do is pick more or less on at least two players to win up to 100 times your money. I'm feeling it for LeBron. He's gonna do more than 24.5 points, but uh, Anthony Davis, 25? I, I don't know, but they have every sport on here. We can go to the NFL and do the exact same thing. So yeah, I'll go with more. Zay Flowers, I'm going with less. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action and they have over 10 million users. Do you wanna play Prize Picks alongside Drewski and MMA champion Sean O'Malley? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries of some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. You can get the Prize Pick app totally free right now by clicking on my link down below. And when you do, you Use code legit street cars. That's going to get you $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup, and you don't even have to win to get the 50 bucks. It's guaranteed. Oh, and Prize Picks also offers weekly promotions like Taco Tuesday. So each Tuesday, Prize Picks will discount players' projections up to 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. So take advantage of the deal. Click the link down below and back to the video. Before our sensor goes back on, we just have a lock washer and a nut, so we'll get this on. And in order to give that a tighten, we're gonna hold this side of the shaft with a six millimeter, and then use a 10 on this side. At this point, we can install the throttle blade, but we do need to turn this in order to accept it, and then we'll slide it in. Kind of give it a little, little shimmy. Get in there, buddy. And it should push right into position. It's just gotta be perfect. So if you push it in this side, it's actually easier. And let's see, as long as these holes line up, we should be good, cool. There we go. So now we have two tiny little screws for that blade and I did install a little bit of blue Loctite on here. We don't want these to loosen up. Tighten these up. I'm not gonna go all the way yet. Let's get this other screw started. There we go. Now we can lock these both in. Those are turbo noises, if you didn't notice. And this is the throttle body talking. Hello. Now we can go back together with our double throttle body spring setup. So there is the green spring on the inside and it's just going to slide over here. And these two hook in like so. And now we just have to wind up the springs. So I'll just kind of hold this here like that. So while you hold the spring pressure, we can apply the throttle cable bracket and this is where the other idle screw touches. I'm gonna push that down. And then to release the springs from stabbing you in the thumb, you, you put them right there. And then you get marks like that on your thumb. Cool. All right, so now we can see the operation feels really good, just like stock. And we can install our lock 
washer and nut, and I'll tighten this up. And we're almost done. Now it's time to fix one of the most common leaks on these throttle bodies. That is the FIAV valve, the fast idle air valve. It requires coolant to go through these tubes. It heats up a wax pellet and it opens. Just another DSM complication and we're gonna get rid of it. So we have to remove this screw here. We're taking this off. Now we'll be left with a flat surface. Give this a quick clean. And then in order to block off the coolant, we're gonna use this block off plate and we're gonna be replacing this seal like that so this sticks out a little bit. So there she is blocked off. Now on the flat side, we can use a little bit of RTV, just a tiny little layer. So now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall this assembly. And the reason why we're installing this at all is because it still has the idle air control motor, so we need it. So we are blocking off the vast majority of this, but we still need you. So we'll get the screws in here and we'll start this one. And it doesn't look like you need longer screws screws with the plate. There was a lot of threads on these anyway. So I'm gonna go around and tighten these up. Very little torque needed. And they do all have factory lock washers, which is nice. Last step is our throttle position sensor. And we'll probably have to make some adjustments to this once we get it on the car. But it goes on like that with two screws. All right guys, and just like that, we have a freshly rebuilt throttle body ready to go back on the Eclipse. Time for the throttle body to go to its home. So we already have a gasket there on the plenum and we can slide this on. We have our second gasket on the throttle body and now it gets the air intake tube. So it's kind of cool. This isn't just silicone that slides over. It's actually bolted in with a flange. Tighten this guy up. All right guys, with the throttle body back together, we're good to start it. And then hang on, before we do, because it's been a while, this is what the car would do before. It's idling really high right now. I might have left a vacuum line off or something. Oh. Okay, all right. So sometimes it would start off with a decent idle and then it would rev up and down and then it would go to like 4,000 RPM. It was insane, but there was clearly an issue. Let's see. This thing always just fires right up. It's been sitting for months. Okay, so right now it's fine. No issues at all, but that doesn't mean anything. So this is a great first start idle. It's cold right now, obviously. So we're at like 1200, I like that a lot. Oh, honestly, this is about the time it would start getting pretty wonky. Hmm. Eh? Okay, a little high idle right there. That, that could be normal though. Not everything's hooked up under the hood. All the vacuum stuff is, but. So far, so good, people. And we haven't even messed with the throttle position sensor. Idle is good. It's still cold, so, you know, it's gonna high idle a little bit. That, that's fine. Before it would rev to 4,000. Look at that, it's even going down a little. Yeah, it's warming up and going down. Yes, yes, it's working. <laughs> this is awesome. This is, this is, this is perfect. And we still have to do the tubing and everything, but this is speed density, so none of this matters for what we're doing right now. The law valve is just kind of dangling here, but it's hooked up. That, that's all that we care about. But wow, obviously it's still cold. We need to put coolant in here, but that, that's great. I don't know if you guys noticed this. I shut it off really quick. That did not move. That is an oil pressure gauge. I looked back at the footage and it was down there the whole time. I was so focused on the idle. I wasn't even like looking at that. And I've never had any oil pressure issues. There's oil, you know, fresh oil and all that kind of good stuff. That, that is scary. We got to hook up a mechanical gauge now. And is this the DSM gods just like, you know, getting back at me for my previous comment about when you fix these things, something else breaks. Oh man. Well, luckily there's a bunch of places to tap in. So we have our oil pressure gauge hooked up. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, thank goodness. Well, oh, hold on. okay, I spoke too soon. Oh no, that's good. Idle's not the best right now. All right, there we go. That's like 2000 RPM. We're holding the throttle. We're good. Woo! Oh my gosh, that was scary. Please Eclipse, no more heart attacks. Jeez trying to fix you. All right, we're getting ready to fill this with coolant. And since we got rid of the FIAV, these will stay open. This one and the other one that you can't see, nothing is going to them anymore. It used to have coolant running to them. So I removed one of the coolant hoses right, right there. And now we can simply loop this one over and we'll plug that in like that, tighten up the clamps and we have a coolant loop. We can cap this as well, but I like using proper coolant hose and doing a loop instead of cap. Some of the caps are kind of cheaper, don't hold up to the heat and the pressure. It's coolant time, people, the green stuff. Guys, we got a new sensor on order. I just put this in temporarily and we can get to that later. Right now we're going to put everything else together like our timing cover. There's three pieces to this timing madness. All right. This one fits in like that. And I had to replace this piece here because it was broken. I found a new one and I don't remember how this goes in now. So it's pretty much impossible to get this one on because this needs to be in here. 
So I have to remove this stud. And that's a stud for one of the motor mounts. A little trick here is I took the two nuts, tightened them into each other, and now, I can spin the bottom one and remove this stud easily without having to use vice grips. You can see vice grip marks right there. This has been out before, that's for sure. Stud is out. Let's see, can we sneak this behind there without taking the other one out? That'd be great. All right, I had to take the other stud off too. Now will this go on, please? Yay. Yay, it fits. We'll save this for a little bit later, but this is the clear one that's gonna go on top so we can see those cam gears spin it. I've installed and tightened up all the bolts for the two out of the three timing cover pieces. We wanna start it though, before we put all the accessories on to make sure nothing's rubbing. That looks good. We don't hear any weird noises. It is a very tight tolerance. That's just how it is. But all right, cool. We're gonna do a little bit of Loctite on these bolts and thread them in. We'll tighten these up. Next for accessories, we have the alternator bracket. This is for the adjustment and it goes right in here and actually uses a water pump bolt to hold it. We'll snug this up and we'll tighten it all the way just yet. I cleaned up the alternator, it was a little grimy before. And now we can slide this in right here. And then this bracket's our tensioner, so we can move this around for the belt. The alternator has a square end. It's gonna rest up against this ridge here. So we line this up, and it'll go all the way. And then this can't spin, so we can get the nut on the other side. We have a power steering bracket going in next, so we're not tightening anything really down there just yet because of the tension we have to put on the belt. So this has two bolts going right to the block that we need to get in before we put the power steering pump on. And there's one more in the front of the block too. With those three tightened up, we can slide the power steering pump into place right there. And this is gonna be the bolt for the adjustment slot. This one is going to fix the power steering pump. We have one bolt in the back like that. Then there's another adjustment slot in the front. Don't you love old cars? So we have to get a bolt going through the pulley like that. Before we go too far, I wanna feed in the AC belt. So it's gonna be easier just to put it right there for now. And before the water pump pulley goes on, we're gonna slide this in also. And that way we can get our AC one on the inside like that. And I'll feed this one around the crank too. This is gonna go to the alternator and the power steering pump and the water pump. Now we have our little water pump pulley slide in through the frame like that. So it only goes on one way. And then we have four little baby 10 millimeters going on in. All the belts are on and now we have to set the tension. So for the alternator, for example, we're just gonna give it a little bit of a pry. Kind of just have to feel for this. And I think that's pretty good. And I have my ratchet ready to go to tighten up the adjuster. All right, alternator's done. And for the power steering, we're gonna do the same thing. So I'll just pry from the block and tighten up the adjuster and it'll hold it. With all the accessories done, we are getting close, guys. We're getting close. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and thread in our studs for the engine mount. I can't wait to get that in there because the jack underneath the car is getting in my way. But you just install two nuts, and that is your stud installer and remover. Time for our polyurethane engine mount. So these were all replaced before my ownership. Typically, I don't like polyurethane mounts or solid mounts. Um, I don't like the vibration, but this one is fine. Should be sham down. Get in there. Let's, let's get over there. Get over there. Get in there. Come on. Yes. And this threads in to the body of the car. And we have our two nuts. They really don't want this coming apart, so they give you a third a bolt. Click. Got some new stainless hardware for the power steering reservoir, mostly because I can't find the original bolts. AC bracket going in with a shiny new bolt also. I just sprayed a little bit of glass cleaner on this just to mint it out, but I wonder what this is gonna look like long-term. Like, is this thing gonna yellow? Is it just gonna look dirty all the time? I don't know. All right, this is looking pretty clean. Yeah. Oh, that's great. You know I got new hardware for this. You gotta be very careful though. Looks so cool. Just in case you didn't know if this was like a dual overhead cam engine, now, now you know, you get to see the cam gears. It's gonna be cool when it's running too. Now oh, I really want new bolts right there. Now that you can see everything. All right, now we can finally install this cover here over the spark plug wires. This is matching the intake. We got the words in silver as well. I'm not very artistic, but that's what I came up with. Silver and black, can't go wrong. All right, I mean, I like this. This is clean, but it is a little plain. I'm curious as to what the factory piece looks like. This is aftermarket, but yeah, I mean, overall this is looking good. I painted the exhaust manifold that is held up well. We have some other good looking things to install. Intake tubes. In the light, I don't really remember exactly how this goes, but this is the one with the blow up valve. And I know that somewhere in this area. So this one has to go right here. 
I like it. Then we have our bluff valve gasket and our purple bluff valve. I have to get that in black as well. But speaking of things that are, are black, check out the coolant cap. Just painted that bad boy. Looking minty fresh. It is cold air induction time. Some of my cars have the air filter, you know, closer to the engine and people yell about the heat and whatnot, even though I've done a lot of testing that doesn't really make that big of a difference if you have a good intercooler. But this car, this car, no one can complain about. The air intake is right here. It's away from the heat. It's gaining at least 1.2 megawatts of power from that. Everything under the hood is done, except for this little plug for the BI. SS valve, even though that seals itself, there is a plug for it. And honestly, uh, you know, I set the throttle position sensor about where it was. I checked for voltage on the computer. It's supposed to be around 0.67 volts. So I, I put it right there. It idles great. I'm, I'm, I'm good with the idle. Let's swap out our oil pressure sensor, probably the original. We're gonna put a little thread sealant on this as well. My old friend. Hello, new friend. What is that song? Hello, darkness. Na, 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 na. I don't know words to songs. I'm a, I'm a na 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 guy. No idea what I'm saying. But I'll sing along. Click. All right, let's see if we have oil pressure. All right, let's see what we got. Are we going to get oil pressure this time? Yay! It's moving on up. All right, so check engine light comes on as soon as we start it. I think that's pretty much normal. It goes away. SRS light for the airbag is definitely on. And I don't have pictures of this. It really stinks, but originally back in the 90s or like the early 2000s someone put a playstation one where the airbag was right in here so this thing had like a big stereo in it that's why the batteries in the back we have all these amp wires and stuff like that but they took it out and i kind of want to put a playstation back in the dash that'd be pretty cool metal engine fan going in it has one one metal one plastic i'm assuming the metal is the originator or it's the one on the turbo side i don't know this dipstick always gets in the way get out of here very easy to do these fans. All right, tighten the two tens on the bottom. We have two tens on top and we have a connector right here. Cool. We're going back together with the Anki wheels, CTS V Brembos. We have the coil overs. Oh yeah. Using this torque stick for this, for wheels, I, I've tested it. It's pretty accurate. It works. Just pull the jack stand out. Just coming down. Ah, I'm stuck. Wow, this thing is, it's, it's low. I've been used to it, you know, being jacked up every time I walked in from the office and whatnot. This thing is very low. That is so cool. And we have all the writing facing us. Not that you can see right now, but I like that a lot, guys. That is neat. Here we go, guys. First drive in quite a few months. Please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't crash. It's a little smoky, but I had a ton of baby oil. That's exactly what it smells like when I was looking for the intake leak with the smoke tester. LSC DSM. All right, I gotta take it easy for a little bit. This turbo lights off like immediately. <laughs> Sounds so good. I love this car. We'll scrape it in the back to fix that. Yeah, lower problems, a little fine tuning alignment needs to be done. But man, she's running good. I actually have the alignment down pretty good so far. And these things handle so well too. Oh. <laughs> this is so cool. I love DSMs. I know they break all the time, but uh, I don't care. I'll fix them all the time too. Oil pressure's good. We're good. Cool, it's good, everything's fine. This is like quarter throttle. It's just like, ah, uh, the boost. The boost. I can't go too crazy and we're just off the wastegate spring. Oh. Yes. <laughs> that feels so good, guys. This is one of those cars, I don't, I don't care. If it, if it makes like 350 all wheels, something like that, it's it's a lot for this little car. It feels great. Uh, the trans is nice. Listen to the turbo. 
All right, well, we caught this early. We're getting some minor rubbing on the tires. And that's because of this lip on the quarter panel. And there's a little bit on the front as well, again, because of a lip on the fender and the fact that it's lowered, but I do like the actual stance and everything, so I don't want to raise it up to fix it. I want to fix the fenders and the quarters. So we're going to take this wheel off. Okay, and we're going to do something that I've always wanted to do. I've, I've never actually done this myself. I just got this tool off of Amazon. But we're going to roll the fenders and the quarters. So first step is bolting this on just like the wheel. It's going to replace the wheel. And they give us some cone washers. And we're going back together with the factory lug nut like that. So I've adjusted this roller. And we're gonna put a little bit of pressure right here. And then we're gonna heat up the area that we're gonna be rolling. Luckily for me, this entire car needs a new paint job. So I kind of like, you know, don't risk messing up the paint. You can do this on a nice car with good paint. You have to be extra careful. Like if you don't feel comfortable doing this, bring it to a shop because you can crack the paint. I recommend you really heat the area up too and just make it more malleable. Malleable. I don't know how to say that word. I think I said it okay. Malleable. 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 The word malleable is kind of malleable in the way you say it. All right, so once we have a little bit of pressure on there, we're just gonna go back and forth and you're gonna be tightening this as you go. This takes a lot of patience. You can see it right now, it's moving. And now I gotta tighten it again. That means we've moved it a little. We're basically just trying to fold this lip up. And I'm gonna try and heat up. I think I'm gonna work with this entire arch at one point. Obviously, we don't need to get into the plastic bumper at all. It's just from here and then all the way down. I'm working it back. I'm working on the railroad. I don't know why that came to me, but I feel like this is that kind of job. Okay, cool. I'm actually working right in here, and that's that's nice. Then I'll probably do this in two sections. All right, this is, this is good. You guys can see what's going on. All right, this is a pretty good angle right here. You can see this is untouched and then it is folding up right here and there is some sealant also. I think that this should be resealed and we're done. We'll definitely do that during the whole paint job so we don't get any corrosion in here. But yeah, it's definitely moving. We can see here. This would probably be enough right now for the tire not to hit, but you can see the massive difference. Look at how much we're gonna gain just by pushing this in. Watch this. You can see it in real time folding in. Then I'm gonna tighten this. It's lefty tighty in this case. Goodbye, lip. Oh, this is cool. All right, guys, I'm pretty happy with this. We have completely removed the area that was touching. And I'm gonna try and keep this uniform to the other side, but we don't have to necessarily roll all of this in. There's not ever gonna be any contact with the wheel over here. And I did the passenger side as well and kind of tapered it off around the same area there so that this stays factory because it does get quite wide here and there's just no reason to roll this necessarily. With this rolled, I wanna remove this upper control arm and replace this ball joint with this adjustable ball joint so we can set our camber at the top. This is pretty slick. I've never installed one of these myself. They're a little pricey. I think I spent like 150 bucks for both of them, but this is a nice piece. We'll start off with a nut for the upper control arm. With the nut back on, we can give this a couple love taps. No, or just one. And I'm gonna remove this. Push this up, okay. It's really neat how easy it is to remove the upper control arm. We have these nuts up on top. And I can pull this out. Right from the bottom, see that? So easy. And this is a pressed in ball joint, so we'll need to press it out. But if you wanted to replace the bushings, which ours are totally fine, it is just this part here. But look at how nice this is. This is beautiful, guys. You know I'm minting it out too. We're totally cleaning this. There's a clip that holds in the ball joint. And first we're gonna remove the dust boot. A little pry bar action, there we go. She gone, and yeah, right in here. You can see that clip. All right, we'll squeeze this, give it a little pry. Kind of work our way around here. Get off. Almost. Nice. Okay, may or may not have hit the Eclipse. We're good, this ball joint was actually in good shape. We're gonna use a ball joint pressing tool and I found some cups that fit. So this one's gonna go here. This is on the receiving end, so it has to be larger. It's gonna go right here. And then we'll fit this over here and we'll thread this in by hand first. It's so far away, get in there. This stuff's always kind of awkward, I'm not gonna lie. Gotta get it just lined up perfectly. Okay, just like that. We're gonna tighten the clamp. And release the ball joint. Release me. Independence Day. 
Phenomenal movie. One of the best motivational speeches of movie history. What was the actor's name that made that speech? It's a big 90s guy, I liked him. You know I'm gonna clean this up. It's structurally in excellent condition. No reason to waste money on a new one, but I'm gonna degrease it first. Scrub it up, dub, and yes, I think this is something I used to use in the shower. It's become an automotive cleaning tool now. It happens. There you go, buddy. You're gonna look brand new. We'll blue blow this thing dry. Uh, we're gonna use a little bit of rust treatment, rust reformer. This is going to encapsulate our rust so it's starved of oxygen and will never rust again. Just like that. Be in there a little bit. Not that I'm ever gonna drive this Eclipse in any really bad weather, but you know, while we're in there. I've let this dry for about 30 minutes. I heated it up as well, just to kind of speed things up. We're gonna hit it with some trim black. This is just a nice OEM satin black finish that I use on a lot of car parts that, you know, don't look the best. So we're installing a ball joint that will move like this, but it needs to be installed a certain way. You don't want it to move this way because that won't adjust our camber. And you can see right here on the factory control arm is a little dot and that is the center of the plane. So we want that to be centered here when we install it. Now they didn't mark it on the new ball joint, which is a little odd. So we're kind of, uh, you know, eyeballing this, I guess. But it's right here. I'd say that's right in the center of the plane. I like it. Now we're gonna install a cup and a washer and a nut. Now because this needs to be loosened up for adjustments, they don't specify Loctite, that would make sense. We're gonna get this tight and then it's held in with 120 foot-pounds. They're not messing around. I'm not gonna do a final torque right now because we know for sure it's gonna need some adjustment. I just wanna pull this sleeve in so it's seated. I'll just do that by hand. All right, that's like 70 one and a half torques according to my arms. That's good, I think, I think we're good to reinstall. Going back in with our beautifully restored control arm. And put the nuts from the top. And before we tighten those, I'll slide the upper ball joint into the spindle, push it down, and we have a new castle nut. I'll tighten this up by hand. And we're using a cotter pin, so we just have to make sure the opening on the castle nut lines up with the hole like that. So many different ways to set the cotter pin. Everybody has an opinion on this. You could go like this and then like this, or you can put them together, bend them over. I don't think it matters. Like this, this cotter pin's not going anywhere, people. That looks good. I'll tighten up these top nuts. Driver's side is installed as well. And while we are in here, I'm gonna put some new tie rod ends on it. They're not loose, but the boots are a little torn. We'll start by loosening up this nut here. And I've sprayed everything down, but you know, no rust on this car. That's good. And then we have our bottom nut. Since we're replacing this, we can hit the threads with the hammer, that's fine. This thing is not coming out. Nope. I tried hitting it a lot, it didn't work, so we're gonna pop it out, hopefully. Okay, that's not working either. Let's try this guy. Many different ways to pop a joint out. Woo! All right, this is today's hero. Now we can just spin the old tie rod off. All right, there it is. Now we're gonna go ahead and replace this lock nut. They give you a new one with the tie rod. And it is a little narrower than the original, but whatever, it's just a lock nut. And we had it right about there. And here is our new tie rod. We'll screw it all the way on. Flip it around and we'll push it into the spindle like that. This of course gets a new castle nut on the bottom. And here's yet another way to install a cotter pin. So the upper ball joint is non-serviceable. It's pre-greased, but this one is not. So we can shoot a little bit of grease in there. Gonna get a good firm connection. When you're greasing, don't let this balloon out and all of the grease come out. Once you start to see a little tiny bit or if you start to see this push out, you're done. There's a little bit of play in the sway bar link joint, so while we're in there. Woo, we're lucky on that. I removed the bottom nut as well. Nice and easy. All right, brand new sway bar link going in. Sometimes replacing parts like this is worth their money just in not restoring the other one cosmetically if it's corroded and whatnot. I think these things were like 10 bucks each. Okay. And we have some new nuts, of course. All right, guys, I have been staring at this pile of leaves for the last like two years. I've been saving this for when we do the paint job and cosmetic video, but I'm afraid it's gonna get all over someone's alignment rack or the dyno. So let's, let's just get rid of it. <laughs> Woo! 
I'm not gonna lie, that felt pretty good. All right, we just got done with a preliminary alignment on the LSC DSM, and we got it pretty close, but I have an appointment with an alignment shop that works with specialty cars with adjustable suspension just to really mint it out. But it is driving straight, and we have adjusted our camber and our tow, and so far, so good on that. All right, guys, we have the tuning twins in the house. We got Miles and Jake messing around with the Eclipse here. It's getting kind of late. We're gonna go for a cruise. That way tomorrow at the dyno, everything goes well because it is a DSM after all. You never know what you're gonna run into. And this is too cool. This is what they pulled up in a Plymouth Colt. Dude, what kind of tires are these? Uh, those are mail truck tires. <laughs> the same exact tires you find on a Grumman like LLV. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is who you need to tune your DSM right here. Is this thing all wheel drive? All wheel drive, five speed. Get out. No way. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh, what a blast from the past this is. 8,000 RPM tack. Look at the seats. Dude. Yeah, she kind of just pulls daily duty right now, but uh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the nice party trick is the sliding door and the seats all fold flat, you know? Yeah. Kind of like the, I think like the waggle van, like the Civic waggle van. Right. Is this, is this basically my engine? Yeah. Just without a turbo? A 2.4 liter, 4G64. It's a single cam version. Okay, yeah, little, right. A little bit more displacement. <laughs> Dude, it's like mint under here. This is great. Wow. Yeah, this van was actually, it was originally out of California. Guy drove it up to Iowa. Somewhere in the mid midst, he sold it to this, the guy I bought it off of and they lost the title. So when I picked it up, I, I got this thing for a song. I actually, I bought this over a year ago, but I didn't start driving it until about six months ago because I was doing a whole bonded title process, which is just a disaster. I pushed through, got the bonded title. It was worth it. I love this car. It's the slowest car I own, but it is a blast to drive. I would just like to say that these guys tune like 2000 horsepower Lamborghinis and GTRs and this is what they're driving. That is too cool. <laughs> All right, I'm driving around with Jake and Miles in the Eclipse for some tuning. We got we got an Oldsmobile over there and I'm in the back seat of my own Eclipse and it's really comfortable. I mean, I'm not that tall, but this is so nice. It's just getting in is the hardest part. Once you're in yeah. here, you're good. No, we're good. I'm like 6'3 and I mean, look at this, I got room. It needs a headliner, that's for sure. But I love the fact that it's got the sunroof. I'm a sucker for sunroofs. I don't know, man. I don't like sunroofs. I love sunroofs. I've never, I never, I just never think have it's a cool. I don't even open them. I just like the view. <laughs> like to be able to look up. I love that. I feel like when I was in high school, it was always a flex to have that sunroof just popped open a little bit. I don't know, I, I could never tell you why it was a flex, but it just always seemed kind of cool. Yeah, so basically what I try to do with some of these logs with Jake is like, we don't even go wide up throttle first. It's always just get some nice, really smooth throttle movements in and out. So you don't have any like tip in or excel, excel enrichment. Just kind of catch as many load points as you can. We'll come back to a correction and then Start rolling it to some boost. There, there's nothing a tuner hates more than erratic and jumpy movements on a throttle. I'm like, I can't do anything with this data. <laughs> so right now the car is running off their base tune that they just emailed to me. I give them the injector data. I think we're running 1300 CC if I remember correctly. And then we have the Hellcat fuel pump and we have the flex fuel sensor, so we can run ethanol. You wanna do a small roll on third? Yeah. Just roll up until the wastegate opens. Okay. That was just a quick little roll. <laughs> it's like it felt so slow. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, fixed it. Just needed some gas. Right before they got here, I put three gallons in and we went for a rip and it was going super lean and fuel pressure was dropping. And we just put another three gallons in and that fixed it. We do have that big Hellcat fuel pump in here and the baffling system in the Eclipse is not the best. So it could have literally been sucking it dry. So on a lot of cars, especially older ones, when you do a big fuel pump, if you modify the bucket at all, you, you shouldn't beat on it under a quarter tank. It's just how it is. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, it dropped. It dropped up. It still dropped. So I wonder how bad how much more fuel we got put in it. So it's fine in third gear there, now it's not in second. All right guys, we're getting some E85. I wish I'd gotten this before, but around my shop, there aren't really any stations, so we had to travel. Well, can I show you guys my favorite part under here? Do you see that that hose right there for the coolant oh, going man. to the turbo, AMG? And it just happened to fit perfectly. That is a pre-bent C63 AMG hose that just happened to feed the turbo perfectly. And you can see the AMG, I just- That's the best, isn't you that can cool? just place another part. <laughs> yeah, but- so far, so good. I like the heat wrap on it too. And it's actually better on these seven bolts, uh, especially the early ones that didn't have the split thrust bearings is what you put a big heavy clutch in it and you dry start them with the clutch pushed in with a huge clutch and it just wipe out the thrust bearings. I mean, crank walk. 
Right. So you guys comment about this all the time. The seven bolt engines have a crank walk issue. This is the original 240,000 mile engine. It doesn't have that yet. And something some guys would do, they disable the clutch switch so that you could start it without pushing the clutch in. You could just start it up in neutral and that's supposed to help prolong the, the life of the seven bolts. Oh, it still started dropping. Fuel pressure's dropping still? Yeah, so maybe we, maybe we got a internal leak in the tank. Yeah, we're still chasing a little bit of fuel pressure drop here. That's weird. Something, I think, fell off the car or we ran it over. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, he's leaving it there, so it's not off this car. Is it? Is it off of this car? No, no way. Okay, what is it? It looks like a little power sports battery. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, we like ran that over and I'm like, oh, that didn't sound good. And then we saw something in the mirror. That sounded pretty good. Parts but flying off a DSM is kind of a normal thing, but <laughs> in this case, it was a, a little battery. All right, guys, something I messed up on, we're gonna fix right now, is I am using the same vacuum reference for the fuel pressure regulator as the boost solenoid. I think I actually did have that right and I moved a bunch of stuff around and forgot where to plug it in, but that's bad because that's gonna bleed air off. And this needs a clean signal in order to rise with boost pressure. So I got I got to fix that. I had to piece together whatever vacuum hose I had. <laughs> and this is what we have. So now we have a direct boost reference. And I put a port on the front of the turbo cover. And I'm running that right to the boost controller solenoid. So we should be good. It's dark out. We're going to give it a hit and hope fuel pressure doesn't dip. That rhymes. dropped a little okay, uh, there's only one little dip in the in the trace there okay uh i am gonna add a little bit of fuel to my mouse because i did i overcorrected okay Woo. how was that much better i get hair in the sensor signal but overall it's where it should be okay how was uh, afr it was on target here just went a little bit richer up top we haven't really run it up there yet yeah i mean at all <laughs> with good fuel pressure so cool damn i'm actually really happy that we got four progress. All right, Jake, 28 pounds, let's go. <laughs> Simmer down. That did feel pretty good. What was that, like 14 pounds of boost? Looks like we creeped up to 17 pounds up top. 17, okay. Yeah. All right, felt pretty good and the fuel pressure drop went away. So that's probably all it was. We were bleeding it off with the boost controller. Uh, so don't do that. Another pull. If he taps, he lets out. Okay. <laughs> so we didn't have the headroom that we thought that was a really good test. Did it start going lean? Which is crazy, it went leaner than it ran. We full, made a full pull and it wasn't that lean. Hmm. So why? Like that makes zero sense to me. I'm draining fuel out right now. We have to pull the fuel pump. Unfortunately, our fuel pressure is still dropping. It's it's weird, it's like intermittent. So I don't know if something is sucking shut inside of the fuel tank, but uh, getting gas didn't fix it and fixing the vacuum line routing didn't fix it, which in hindsight, we did have the wastegate controller off so it wouldn't bleed so yeah you still want to just have your own reference for that fuel pressure regulator but fortunately we're still having issues guys i don't know about this flow is this hellcat pump flow this is like kind of weak i was expecting it to be blasting out right now that could be the issue all right disconnected everything here i didn't like the flow on that pump at all maybe the sock is an issue i don't know Wait, there is no sock. All right, let's take a look at this thing. Even after draining all that fuel, look at how much fuel there is on this side. Okay, you know, I did put a sock on this thing and it's it's here. This could be sucking up at the bottom there and blocking it off. All right, guys, I can't explain it, but this just keeps on popping off, this whole sock situation. I got another sock. It's off of my Ford Lightning, but it has the exact same kind of fitting and it's much tighter. It's not falling off the sock. So let's see. Yeah, look at that. That's perfect. You know, I did this fuel pump like a year ago and it is a real Hellcat fuel pump, but I wonder if I ended up having to use a cheap sock from the auto parts store because I, sometimes they don't come with any socks. Some guys don't run them, but I do like to have something on there. But yeah, no, this is good. This looks brown, but it's clean. It's totally clean. All right, I'm gonna roll Ford Lightning fuel sock. Hopefully that fixes it. Yeah, let's see the flow now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that was the problem. Okay, yep, yeah. check your socks, people. Night, night on your feet, you know, you know what I mean. Here we go. And I'm riding back here with, well, with no real back seat. I just want to monitor all this, make sure we don't have any leaks or any issues. I'm not going to say anything. I was going to say something like we're good now, but we're not saying that I'm knocking on this anyway. I hope you guys appreciate the, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, and stuff that some of you out there would consider my fault for you know, not making sure the sock was on there. I swear I did. It sapped on there like beautifully last year when I did the fuel pump. This unit is ready to go.
back to its home. I don't know, I don't know, I can just edit that out, people, all right? But I show you guys, because we all make mistakes. It's normal. It is very late now, but we're still out here tuning. Tuning twins are awesome for sticking with me here for the dyno. We just don't want any issues at the dyno. I think I'm gonna raise this up tomorrow before the dyno. Yeah, I was about to say, it might be hard to strap. I mean, it's so low. Yeah, I'll, I'll raise it, I'll, I'll mess with the shocks a little, put some more miles on it. The tap is ready. That is the lean tap. As we call it here in the industry. Oh, hey, nice. No tap. I wish you guys could see my face. I was like, ah! I felt way faster. Look how smooth it is now. The green line right here, dude, it's solid. It's almost like something was blocking the fuel pump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no leaks, no nothing, we're good here. All right guys, we just turned up the boost. We were at 17 and a half pounds and it, it felt fantastic. Fueling is great, everything is good. So this should be, well, we'll see, maybe like 20 PSI, yeah, something like that. Fine. We have the uh, duty cycle set at 35%. Great. Let's yep. see what happens, here we go. Tomorrow's actually gonna go well. <laughs> don't Knock say that! Wood, don't wood. say that! Oh, you so no! Wood. You never say that with a car like this! How much was that? Uh, I saw a 20 and a half on there and I see 20 and a half on here. So nice. cool. Woo! Guys, this thing rips. Like awesome. it's a light car, they just feel fast. I mean, we I don't know, we probably have like how much horsepower right now? Like uh, 350? A small estimate. Yeah, oh, that's actually Pretty accurate, it's about 350. Yeah, we probably have 350 all wheel and it is super fun. It just dead hooks, plants, goes. Yeah. All right, we're just looking over everything right now. Anything with the dipstick? Oh my gosh. Just a couple little drips coming out, nothing yeah. crazy. I mean, is this really necessary? Um, like, like these things really just shoot out? It, even like a healthy motor, but with a bad dipstick can push it out. And this one's the rubber on it. Is wrong. Yeah, it's bad. Okay. So. This is the DSM dipstick mod, so it doesn't shoot out. Great. But yeah, no, overall, everything is, is looking fantastic. That's awesome. Thank you, Ford Lightning. So check it out, guys. A little sneak peek to a fuel system that we're working on here. We used the dual factory fuel pump system from the Lightning and a Milwaukee battery and some switches and a bucket. And yeah, look at this. Isn't this neat? So this is what we're gonna be taking on adventures and we stole the sock off one of these guys. So factory Ford sock, definitely better than this aftermarket cheapo one. I think I got this from AutoZone. Bad sock, bad sock. All right, it's the next day. We're almost at the dyno. I've driven this thing a hundred miles since last night. And I burned up a ton of fuel, mostly because I wanted to get more E85. And because I have the adjustable suspension, I went up a little bit. I think it was too slammed before. I think I'm gonna go a little bit lower in the front, but the rear, is looking really nice and this will also help us you know get this thing on the dyno yeah overall stance is definitely getting there it's a work in progress here we are cannonball garage lots of fast mclarens and stuff the fraud taurus cannonball car which is actually an audi but it, man it does look like a taurus and check it out the sunroof on the eclipse does work <laughs> turbo timer and i i love the sunroof. this this was a must for me on one of these cars i love how it pops up like that and back and just so, so cool. God, I can't wait to get the body work and paint done. Here we go, here we go. I'm glad I raised this thing up. That intercooler was low before. All right, here we go, here we go. We got the tuning twins in the house. We got lots of fans going on, it's loud. And we're about to go for a base run just to get AFR set. And I was talking to Arnie, he said this is the first DSM on the dyno at Cannonball. That's an honor. Guys, you don't understand the nerves I have of this thing on a dyno. It's a DSM, bad stuff can happen. We're gonna see a little bit of smoke and blow by. It's got 240,000 miles. How'd we do, how'd we do? Oh, look at that, first run off the wastegate, 327 wheel, and that's about 17 pounds, right? Yeah, that was wastegate, 17 pounds wheel. Wow. That was a great base run, so no timing was put in there. This was a very safe tune. First run, 17 pounds, that's the lowest amount of boost that we can run you know with with our boost controller and our wastegate spring 
and it didn't blow up. They just cranked up the boost. So we're on setting A on the controller, which is I think gonna be about 22 PSI. So from 17 to 22, we'll see what we gain. You can do it 4G63. You can do it, hold it together now. 240,000 miles, here we go. That's normal, right? That's that's a DSF. Yeah, a little, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. 359 horsepower and 327 foot-pounds of torque. Big, big gains right there. Feeling good? All right. That's what they said on the screen. They're like, you just want 350. Yeah. <laughs> 22 PSI, spot on. Turn up the boost even more. A little bit, okay. More boost. All right, here we go. I definitely have to figure out a catch can situation here. That's no good. We picked up 10 horsepower and about 20 foot pounds of torque. Oh, that was only 23? Okay, so that was just one more pound. Wow, 20 foot pounds of torque on one more pound of boost. You guys wanna know something crazy? These cars stock dyno at about like 170 horsepower. And this is still the stock engine, stock transmission, all that stuff. So we're at 370. So we've gained more than double the amount of horsepower to the wheels that this car has stock and, and hopefully we'll keep going. That, that's nuts. Like think of it this way. Let's say you have a 320 horsepower LS1 F body. You add a few easy bolt-ons, leave the engine and trans alone and you'd be at over 700 horsepower. That's basically what's going on over here with the Eclipse. We're more than doubled it. Could we triple it? Man, that'd be a lot. I don't think we could triple it. on the boost controller over boost. It was popping right there too, so that's like a safety. That's good. Sound a little scary though. like that. We don't like that. That could be spark blowout. I gotta pull the plugs right now. This is hot, hot, hot. Just removed the five millimeter Allens. Ah, 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 ah. Luckily, most four-cylinder engine spark plugs are, are very easy. Right up top. Right, let's see it in condition first. Perfect, looking great. Brand new still. All right, so I have the gap at about 23,000, and Tuning Twins are saying to go to 18, so I'm gonna stick an 18 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge in here. I don't have my fancy plug gapping tool, so we're just going to give this a couple of taps. Very light, I like to keep the feeler gauge in there. Yes, the spark plug is hot. Ah! Okay, rag will definitely help. We're just closing up the gap. Plugs are all done. They all looked great. Gap down to 18 thousandths. Putting our little beauty cover back on. All right, hopefully no more spark blowout or popping noises because hopefully that was spark blow out. That's what we think. Fingers crossed. That fix it, no more spark blowout. Whoa, 383, nice. 350 foot pounds. They said they're gonna cap the torque right at about 350. So in the tune, they can basically limit the amount of torque this thing makes. That's really what brakes engines, bends rods, brakes rods, stuff like that is the torque, especially if it comes in too low. Again, 240,000 miles, bone stock engine. So I'm good with 350 torque, that's awesome. How much boost was that? All right, about 25, nice, nice. We're going for another run. I know it's loud with the fans. I, I want you guys to experience the awesomeness of this turbo, so I'm gonna film this one from about here. Oh my God, I love it, guys. I love it. I'm gonna get some sound clips of this thing in the morning for you guys because just driving it around, you just, it sounds awesome. I pulled up in the house yesterday, and my boy's like, is that the McLaren? I'm like, 
Nope. Oh man, look at that. We are almost at 400 all wheel horsepower. We've been doing these runs with just like two minutes in between. So we let it cool down for about 10 minutes. I think this might be it. We're at 26 PSI of boost. That's pretty good. It's still alive. 392. It's very consistent. Everything is looking really safe, but we're up in the boost. We got to hit 400. This engine and this whole car has done everything its owners have asked of it. I mean, it was basically a daily driver. So many miles, so many original parts. You can do it. Just a little bit more boost. Can we hit 400 horsepower? I pee in my pants a little bit every time. Here we go. the whole time I'm like ah! ah it's so close oh my god what was the max boost on that uh, it was a half pound more <laughs> we did one more tune revision they think we can get to 400 wheel and if you guys are curious because i did that whole intercooler system you know a few episodes ago on the eclipse starting intake air temp is 71 and it gets to like 91 or 92 that's pretty good here we go about this car is that the oil burning smoke has totally cleared up and we are running ethanol so we're cleaning things up and I we probably got rid of a ton of carbon just ripping it so many times on the dyno oh come on guys this is crazy we're right there was that more boost that was more boost that's on right it didn't lighting start the whole time ah uh, okay all right we're good we're good okay. I know. Guys, it did 396. Can I just say it did 400 all wheel? I mean, it's so close, but that is, that's it. We're gonna call it quits. It started a full timing. So, you know, we brought it, you know, right to the max and we don't want to risk this engine at all. I, I want to enjoy this car. <laughs> no flames. No. Okay. <laughs> He's trying to get it to shoot flames. I'm like, no flames. It's like, all right, one second. <laughs> Shoots flames, yes. <laughs> Jeez, that's pretty crazy. It's not pretty good. Yeah. Don't, don't do that again. It's <laughs> okay, I, yeah. <laughs> okay, it still runs well after that. We're good. <laughs> hey, you guys want to see something funny and what some people on YouTube probably do? Well, I watch this. If they just turn the smoothing off, look at that. We could have had a 400 wheel horsepower run, but that would be lying. We didn't do 400, we did 396 and I'm gonna live with it. Just don't trust every dyno video you see on the internet because it is just that easy. They just made a few clicks over there and turned off what's called the smoothing. And sometimes it'll go up when you do that. You can also mess with the correction for temperature and humidity and all that stuff. But all of my videos are legit. We started off at 327, just rolling in off the base tune, got all the way to 396, pretty good. Big torque dump here is gonna be very feeling. It's gonna be bad. Yeah, Right when it hits, it's like 200 or 100 foot pounds. Yeah. Right on the hit. Let's see, go show us the delta here. So we got 254 to 350. Yeah, so it's like almost 100 foot pounds. Wow. All right, guys, the tuning twins once again, and you guys are going to see them soon in a GTR video that is coming. It is one kind of like big grand finale video on the GTR, and they are heavily involved making, well, a lot more power than this thing, but that's to be expected. So <laughs> thank you guys again. I really appreciate it. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Dude, this is too much fun now. What? <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, it's kind of dark out, obviously. We'll get some clips in the morning of this thing. I want You got to hear it from the outside. It's the next day. We have colorful shirts on. <laughs> oh, man. That was like my first, like, real first gear rip. Man, I like miss the shift on that. This thing goes to like 8,000 RPM like instantly. I almost made that not a family channel. That was... <laughs> this is only 400 all wheel. Like, I, I, God, nice, it's such a little car. Holy cow. You know, I'm used to having to like get a rolling start to like get traction, yeah, but I don't have to on this. <laughs> oh man. 
man. <laughs> that is so cool. I gotta say, it's a victory after every pull with the DSM because you look down at the tack and the oil pressure, and if it's good, you're like, I won again. Because it's it's a matter of time usually, but I don't know. I shouldn't say that. Two hundred forty thousand miles. I mean, once that boost starts really moving, it's just yeah, it's going, man. Holy cow! Ready? <laughs> there is like there's definitely lag in between the shifts you know yeah like you can definitely feel it man these brakes are the best too these brembos like are awesome yeah real quick <laughs> sounds so good too just even part throttle driving around Oh man. oh man. <laughs> See, I feel like when people think of that typical import sound, this is that sound. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It and it's not good. like super Honda like, no. you know. Speaking of sounds, do you guys want to hear this thing from outside? We got to take a trip to uh, Mexico Lane. All right, here's some outside boosted launch footage. That launch was good. I, I didn't like go crazy. I'm trying to keep the drivetrain alive. That's, you know, they're hard to come by now. This is too much fun. Oh, good launch. <laughs> oh, it feels good. Oh man, that launch is great. Gosh, I would love to run this against the GTR off the line. I know that car would, would kill this, but Gosh, I wonder what that would be like. Would it be that bad? Oh, we got smoke. We got smoke, Max is waving me off here. What's up? Dude, you got a bunch of smoke coming from under your hood. Oh no, I saw that, okay. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got some smoke. Think it's the dipstick? Probably. Yeah, a little bit of dipstick. I'm also smelling a little bit of clutch from those launches, so we should probably simmer it down. This does have a newer aftermarket clutch and it, and it grips fine, but uh, actually, you know what guys? I think it's just the brakes. Yeah, I mean, I, I put the CTSV big Brembo brakes on here and this is really the first time I've, I've used them a lot. Oh yeah, they're hot. I think it's just the paint from the brakes. We're good. All right, Max, you want a little boosted launch action? Let's do it. I have tools in the back. <laughs> it's a good way to scare people. <laughs> that was pretty good. It hits hard though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I would say so. <laughs> All right guys, so the smoke was a little bit of engine oil from the dipstick, and I think the brakes, the clutch feels fine, the thing runs fine, everything's good. Um, yeah, that's DSM power, baby. <laughs> guys, if you got a 90s Japanese car, early 2000s, whatever, Get a turbo timer. Oh, that was supposed to be way cooler. Hang on. Get it. Oh, I missed it again. Darn. Well, that'll do it on the Eclipse. And the next video you guys are going to see on this car is going to be the full cosmetic restoration. So I'm going to town. We're tackling the entire interior headliner. I'm going to recover the seats myself. All the little bits and pieces that are broken inside there are going to get fixed up. It's getting a stereo. The entire car is getting painted and I might collaborate on that with somebody that you guys know. Take a guess down below. He's going to fly in for a few days and help me with all of the prep work and then yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna look brand new, guys. I have the whole factory Mitsubishi facelift 2G body kit, the wing and everything. It's gonna be perfect now that, it, well, it runs perfect, except for that, you know, that little oiling thing. I'll get a catch can in the next video, too. But if you guys enjoyed this one, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends and family, subscribe. If for some crazy reason you haven't already, it's free, there's a button down there, it really helps me out. But most importantly, have a fantastic day. I'll see all of you in the next video. Take one last look at it guys the next time you see this well you know at the end of the video it, it's gonna look a little different okay hang on and also say hello to the old mobile it's a little dirty right now because i've been driving it this is kind of turned into my daily
All right, one, one last thing for this. One last this. I've set the springs aside. I've spread. And we have a seal there. And we have ones and. So when I took mine apart, when I took mine apart, I first bottomed it out and then. So as far as, so as far as initially setting this, I, I made sure to remember where this was set in it. I made sure to, now we didn't, we didn't go. This is the valve that uses the wax pellet. Now it's time to, now it's time to fix one of the biggest. Now it's, um, what was I gonna say? Hmm, not that. So we have a second gasket on the throttle body and now it gets our ear intake to ear, ear or air. I don't know what I'm saying. Now we have, um, okay, yeah, I guess we can do the belt here. Give it the old thread tap. That is not working at all. All right, so we'll start off with this. We'll start off with this nut. We'll start off. Ah. And and here's another and here's yet another way to install a cut. All right, guys, I'm draining fuel out right now. We got to pull the fuel pump. Ah. I'm draining fuel out right now. We have to pull the fuel pumps out. All right, it's a little dark right now. We'll get some clips in the morning. You got to hear this thing. Uh, blah 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 blah. I don't know what to say. Or I don't know where I'm going. You boys like Mexico? My end gear? I hope so. Gonna stop buying stick cars. Got too many. 